people on your commute to work. Glad to be back. Uh, yeah, I'm glad to be back because uh, my friends and family thought I was off the Bro Rants podcast. <laughs> Dude, somebody's uh, somebody's last podcast. <laughs> off, Man. off topic, off topic Man. before we get there. We got Cousin Jeff in the building. So Cousin let's just. Jeff is in the house. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's yeah. Not, Exactly. Thank you for being here. And, and, and Ray, let's not harbor on <laughs> things that may have occurred uh, in your absence. Uh, hey, we're back on camera, though. I mean, it's been what? How long has it been since we've been on camera? Uh, it's been like almost two weeks, man. Oh, oh, since we've been on camera? Shoot, it's been the entire year. Wow. Like, uh, where's it? Do, we, do, we need me? do we need makeup? Uh, well, I hope not. No. <laughs> Ray used to use makeup back at, uh, on the other shows. That was a secret. No, I'm kidding. They, they didn't enhance anything, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, so how was your, your guys' week? How was your week, Ben? Or your weekend? How was your weekend, matter of fact? Um, you can go first, Jeff. Oh, uh, this weekend was miserable. It was rainy. It was overcast. And I mm. had the uh, duty of heading over to Claremont mm. and dismantle a pool and take it down to Deltona. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Dismantle a pool. For folks that don't know, round trip, we're looking at about two plus hours. And if you've ever dismantled an above ground pool, Mm. uh, it's something. Why? Why? Why do people do that? I learned. I learned a thing or two. Why? Why do people do that? That's uh, my my mom was doing that before. Remember, she was taking the shoes, expanding and getting bigger with the pool. Like, leave it. It's like because what? What is it made out of? I, I don't even know. I think it's like a cl- uh, not a, cl- it's a, a vinyl, a vinyl, vinyl, vinyl. Yeah, thick, yeah. very thick vinyl yeah. that it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, uh, disintegrate eventually. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get some tears in it. And what do you use? Like, are you gonna use the the, the patch for the tire? Well, hold up. <laughs> patch all, that shit up. It wasn't even for me, you know. So that's a crazy thing. Oh, you know, Jeff's I just got roped guy. into a situation. Oh, nah. mm-hmm. um, but it's all love. Yeah. It'll it'll bring smiles to a couple of kids. So it's a win. Just that's for what, just for a good about. month, just for a good month yeah. until those tears start coming through, because <laughs> them things don't last, man. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Raymond? Oh man, uh, I had a wonderful week uh, weekend. Yo, I, tell us about wait, wait, wait. Tell us about your uh, uh, mobile Alabama. See, your your vacation. It, it's not mobile. It's mobile, but you know, Let mo- know. Let mobile. Know. Okay, excuse me. That's the port city. There you go. Um, so mobile. my trip was it was amazing and. Uh, sad but amazing at the same time. Uh, the amazing part was that I was able to reconnect with friends that I haven't seen in I don't know, I don't know ten years, twelve years. Mm. Is and that where you originally from? Born and raised, Mobile. Oh, nice. Born gotcha. and raised. Uh, and I was reconnecting with my daughter as well. And at first, there was like a lot of like uh, hurt from her what she expressed it to me. Gotcha. But after it, it kind of after 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 everything came came out it kind of settled down and we were able to just start building on that. Oh, that's good. So that was, I mean, it was a lot for a young girl to reconnect with a father who really hasn't been in her life that that much. Okay. So, but overall, yeah, overall it was great, great time. Great. Well, well, kudos for that, man. Um, glad you're reconnecting with your daughter and, uh, hopefully you guys build from there. And did she, did she win? How did she place in the homecoming? No, she was just part of the court as a freshman court, so she didn't actually win. Uh, it was, singers actually win the homecoming, but they were just pretty much, uh, she was as like a symbol or showing the future for homecoming. Okay. She was a symbol? No, uh, she was a, a they have to, well, you know what? Think, think about it like this. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, this is for that mobile <laughs> shit. She was a symbol? Go ahead, go. T- do tell me if she's a symbol. Keep this, hey, okay, okay, nah, so, ahead, look, so look. How was it? <laughs> the bride got got bridesmaids, right? Let, let, let's see. Let, let's see if we get herself out of this. How? So, so it, listen. Tell us about it. So they had to pick people from uh, from the freshmen, right? Okay. So yeah, she was chosen out of all the freshmen. So okay, how was she chosen? By her peers. It was it the was it the ones that had the best symbol? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Haters would be. Your I'm just haters. messing with you guys, man. Um. My week, my weeks was good, man. It was, it was kind of weird not having Ray here. I was like, gosh, Ray left, and then Ray didn't let me know that he was leaving until it was too late that we didn't have a Monday show. <laughs> so I said, you know what, the show must go on, and it did. Uh, it was weird doing it solo, like a monologue. But I was like, you know what, I, was, I showed Kate. I was like, oh, look at this. Did you ever? Did you see the picture? No, you didn't see? Oh. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Raymond oh. can show you while I'm talking. He can show you the picture oh while I'm my talking. Gosh, man, it was so I was so like, 
I was like, this is great. This is a good clickbait. I was like, he's going to see this and he's going to like crash the car on his way to work. Because <laughs> he's like, I'm back. Oh, you're back. Okay. <laughs> hey, it was, it was, I was like, what, 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 what you doing? Okay. All right. But yeah, over the weekend. So what we did over the weekend, we didn't actually do. We had people come in. We painted the house. If you guys notice, uh, it's, it's, it's a different color. We upgraded our, our, our furniture. Uh, did a little, um, I guess you call it interior upgrade. remodeling or mm-hmm. upgrade. No symbol. <laughs> upgrade. Symbol. See yeah. Right you see, it gave me X oh, out. So, wow. So. It got me X out. Isn't that, isn't that low? It's not low, man. Uh, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, go look at the anchor right, app actually. and you can see the, uh, you can see the, uh, artwork. So just to, for, for the, the cover, people, for the people listening to the podcast, okay. you know, what they're driving. Yeah. So, uh, there's a picture of me and Reg. If you look at our logo, when you, buy, when you buy our gear, you'll see a picture of Reg. You'll see a picture of me and we're, we're standing next to each other side by side. So on that logo, yeah. Reg has me X'd out. X'd me out. <laughs> Low, dirty. It said, "Get the hell out." It would it say, "Get out." Oh man! I said, "Raise out." He's yeah, on vacation. Ra- said, yeah, raise out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, if you read the description, it says he's on vacation. Relax. He's on vacation. It's clickbait. Clickbait. You know. Oh yeah. Some uh, people take pictures that have you know their junk showing. Some people clickbait you with crossing out a, a, a former co-host. I had a few of my homeboys text me up and say, "Hey." You all right? What's going on? <laughs> hey, hey, what's going on? What the fuck? <laughs> love it. Yo, I love it. Oh, man. I, I know your heart. When you saw it, tell me, honest to God, when you saw what happened, did you feel like you're like, oh, shit? This is what I, this is what I honestly said. This is good. I said, I looked at my phone like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, Rez. Okay. See how you live. I, I see. Okay, let me finish what I'm doing, and I'll get with you later. Oh, okay. <laughs> Until I actually... Read it. No, as a matter of fact, I listened to it. Then I said, oh, okay. I see what he's doing. Wink, wink. I got you. But at first. Yeah, but here's the thing. Now you know who, who was actually listening, who contacted you. That was your people, right? Like, oh, shoot, bro. You out of it? What's yeah, going on? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you know? need a minute? You need a moment? <laughs> I know you're just recovering with your, your, you know, your daughter. You guys are building stuff, but you just broke this thing. <laughs> this thing's gone. They had my back. So speaking of you guys, uh, this week or uh, what was crazy with the trial and everything coming with the verdict. What did were you guys satisfied with the the Derek uh, Chauvin verdict? Did you did you were you satisfied? Did you see it coming or you were you shocked? I, I shouldn't say satisfied. Were you shocked by it? Did you think he was going to get off or not get all the charges filed against him or um, charged on every charge convicted? You can go first, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so. <laughs> Uh, that, that breath there he gets. Yeah, no, that breath basically symbolizes how I felt about the whole situation. Okay. Right? It's, it's, uh, it was a holding of the breath because mm-hmm. historically there's been plenty of other instances where we've caught people on camera doing yeah. things that fell outside uh, of their role mm-hmm. and they were not brought to justice. So this was another situation, even though it was gruesome mm-hmm. to watch that video, even though it impacted uh, people of all ages uh, and backgrounds, there's still this part of you that believes that, okay, this guy could walk away from this. Um, true, true. So until the verdict came down, uh, which, you know, whether you like it or not, in my opinion, was favorable, it, 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 was, a, it was a very tense moment, and it was, uh, it was me basically holding my breath. And I think that that in itself symbolizes Mm -hmm. where we're at, right? Because when you have that much evidence, when you have video, when you have a scene that played out the way that did, and there's really no reason for the prolonged pressure on his neck, and you're still on the other side thinking to yourself, like, man, this guy may get off, that symbolizes the problem with, or better yet, the disconnect uh, between you know, just society and uh, our, our law, Laws, uh, yeah. our, our law service, you mm-hmm. know, so. Wow. Yeah. That's, well, that's, f- that's it for me in a nutshell. Yeah. Well, I agree with you on that. I mean, it, it, it was, but at the same time, I felt like when I listened to the, tr- listened to the trial and the witnesses, yeah, it was too, too many police officers who came on board and they weren't for Derek. They didn't even give him like an ounce of like, they understood what he was going through or he was, 
he was a little a little bit right or he or he was doing the right thing or using the right procedures. Yeah. They all pretty much separated themselves from him. They all said he did the wrong thing. They all said he didn't follow the right rules. Yeah. And it was kind of like a change as far as usually they, they protect themselves, the you know, the the blue line or the blue code or but this was different. I thought jumping off what you said, I thought the reason uh, like you, both of you guys said, um, the fact that the video there was this first and foremost the number they were they were saying forever was eight forty six and then it turned out it was nine twenty nine. So when you added mm-hmm. that much time, almost another minute to it, it was ridiculous, right? But you see this guy s- sitting on his neck, and I think I thought what really d- did it in for him is when the medic the medics came, the paramedics came, mm-hmm. and they checked the pulse, and they said, "Yo, he's you know." No pulse, dead basically, right? Gets up, go gets the gurney, comes back, and has to tap this man on the shoulder and say, "Yo, can can you finally can you get up so we can grab grab the corpse?" Basically, that says it all. That says what your your intention was. Right. Your intention was, you know, that's what it that's what it looked like to me. Like that to me sealed the deal when the paramedics came and tapped him, and after they took the pulse, and he didn't get up until they were like taking the body away. Yo, it was game over to me. Um, because the video, like you said, I, I, you're in a society now. You're like, okay, there's video now. Well, we've had video with Rodney yeah, King and everything like that. Right. We've had all that. And and still at the end, you even have it with Ahmaud Arbery that you're sitting there with this stuff showing. Like uh, people are trying to justify, oh, well, he, he ran after the gun. But if you look at the, the video evidence, it shows that the guy raised his rifle and that's why he ran around the other side of the truck. And people can't process that. So I'm like, what do you need? You need like a, a word from God to say, yeah, uh, you're this dude, you know, that guy's guilty. That guy's intention was this. When video can't give context anymore. Right. That's the scary part. So it's not even like, do you have evidence? It's like, no, you have evidence. So what else do you need? You, we actually need to hear that man said, I'm going to kill him. Well, mm-hmm. you know, the thing about that, though, is. Yeah. We can sit here and debate all day whether it was his intent to actually kill him, right? And that's yeah. a little harder to prove. But without a doubt, we yeah. can all agree that what he did was unnecessary. And you know what? That ultimately led to his death. And that's where, that's you know, the right word, that's, unnecessary. that's the line mm-hmm. that got crossed. And so for a lot of the people that still feel that, you know, this was an injustice and this was somehow fueled, yeah. uh, you know, by one side... Uh, or, you know, for some form of political gain. Yeah. I call shenanigans on that because at the end of the day, I may feel that he did it intentionally. You may feel that he didn't. But the, the one thing that you cannot refute is the fact that how he went about handling his business yeah. led to a man's death. And, and it was done in a fashion that was completely unnecessary. Exactly. Completely unnecessary. That's the word. Four and one. Four and one, three and one. And it's, to me, it was like, I, I don't know, man. It was like a, a, a gang beating and one guy stand there and, and hold the crowd off or lookout was the lookout, which was Officer Tao or whatever. He was the lookout. And these other guys are sitting there. And you heard, did you guys hear about the one officer that she did this? I forgot her name. Excuse me. Um, She stopped a fellow officer from choking out oh, of the a, illegal choke. Hold? Yeah. Mm. And she stopped him. She got between the officer and punching her. She ended up getting, losing her job Looted and, and blew up the force, pension. pension one year or a couple months before she would be supposed to get her pension, I think. And, uh, so she finally, the, the judge reinstated her pension and everything, um, recently, but she was, but that's what we need. We need, uh, good apples like that, that step in front and say, okay, um, He's down. Like, can we? The guy said a c- couple Look times. Let me check your pulse. Though, Reg. Look at what it cost her. So we're talking about good apples, but she stepped in. She did the right thing. Yeah. And then you know what? She fell. She fell victim to the same system that yeah. she was trying to protect. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly. crazy. When yeah, you think about that's absolutely. why people don't do the right and thing. That's sometimes. why people don't do the right I, I thing. Get, yeah, I get that. But it, here's the thing: when they when you take away the uh, them having uh, what is it? Uh, can't even think of the word. Um, the immunity? The immunity, right? Mm-hmm. When you take away that and you can go after the pensions and stuff like that, it's game changer. Because if I go to work and I mess up numbers, you go to work and you, you guys mess up anything at work, your, your, your job's at stake. How are these guys taking lives in situations and they can still, you know, they get to leave an absence for a day a week or get desk duty to process whatever? I mean, I'm saying when they're in the wrong, not when it's a, a justified shooting, guys. So 
don't 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 um well there isn't any in, in, there isn't any any incentive to do the right thing well there's yeah well, there's no penalty to do the right That's thing incentive accountability, right? accountability you don't get account- no accountability pensions don't get touched if anybody's paying, it's the taxpayers paying when they actually settle, settle with civil suits. So basically, basically, it's the victims' p- families paying this bill anyway. Mm. So, so I want to rewind real quick. So, yeah, sure. for all of our law enforcement uh, peoples that are yeah. joining in on this show, uh, whether you know you are in law f- law enforcement or whether you have a family member or a loved one, please let me first say this. First and foremost, I appreciate. And I am thankful to we, the people. We. Respect, <laughs> brother. We are thankful and we appreciate yeah. the people that put their lives on the line day in and day out. Your job is not easy. You are met with all forms of resistance. Mm-hmm. And there are instances where you have to make a split decision, like a, a split second decision uh, for either the protection and benefit of yourself or the people around you. As a black man with all of the ugliness that's being shown on social media and television right now, Mm -hmm. as far as, you know, the interactions, I've had some really good interactions as well. I actually probably have more favorable interactions than negative ones. That said, I've also been pulled over for no good reason with guns drawn, held Mm. on the side of a road for a solid 15 to 20 minutes with no explanation given. Wow. Only to then be told like, "Oh, you're good to go." You guys matched the description of uh, of a of a potential suspect in the area. Wow! And those are the things that we're addressing today. You know, absolutely. Uh, and so I just kind of wanted to put that out there because mm. I know there's a lot of people that are passionate um, on this subject, and right. I think we spend a lot of time bashing, but we don't necessarily spend a whole lot of time congratulating. Well, well said. I mean, if you go back on our show on one of our previous episodes, we did interview uh, Sheriff Chitwood uh, from Volusia County. So. Okay. We definitely do support our law enforcement. I support law enforcement. I support anybody that does does their job right. Um, if you do your job like shit, I do not support that. Um, I'll just speak for it, you know, because at the end of the day, people speak the blue, blue lives matter, and then and I I don't know where this thing came from because when you when someone can show me from DNA and on ethnicity or nationality where blue lives are, then we can talk. Because that makes no sense. You're talking about a job. You're talking about a uniform. That when people saying black lives or whatever, um, they're talking about a skin color that cannot be changed. You can be blue lives no matter what color you are. Just like you can be in the pride, you know, as far as the LBGQ, no matter what color you are, right? You can be any of those things. What black is you are, when you're ethnicity, you're that ethnicity. There's no changing that. No documentation is going to change that. So... That was That's more, that was more political. They're trying to they're trying to draw a line. That's what it was. I, I understand, but yeah, it's it's lives versus job. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's occupation versus a life. That's a skin color. Okay, sure. Let me go change my skin color. So now I'm I'm in this safety. No, I, you know what I mean. When you get home, you're a cop. You take off your uniform. No one knows you're a cop when you go wherever. I f- I wear this uniform every day, which is my skin. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's like just like what the issue with the Dante Wright thing. Um, having the expired tags and i thought that uh from what i've heard it was um what not paying what, what, was it was it either having it a uh you guys familiar with it or no why he had the expired tags or it or, was something about he uh missed a court date and it was yeah. sent to the wrong address or something or, yeah. right so yeah. it was I something which was pulled over because of the expired tag on the car which actually i think belonged to his uh mother his mother yeah. yeah she said she just got him the car so it's basically game the car and um anyway and um from there it just kind of escalated escalated yeah. very weird um i don't know there's so many speculations on that they were like you couldn't hear the gunshot in the in the video i don't know the you notice know, people there's no time and stamp you know for people that are with the conspiracy theories like and then you have the other thing with the young lady that just happened in what, what was that in ohio Right. About the, the knife? Yeah, man. But I'm I don't know. See no, she was about to stab a little another person. So, so, so she had it and I thought that was So it's funny because those are two situations that seem similar but they're very different. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you have the uh the first situation where yeah. there are multiple cops on the scene, you know, he gets out the car yeah. and then it kinda escalates. But at that point you've already gotten a feel for okay, well, 
who are the people involved, what's the circumstances, you know, mm -hmm. how that situation escalated will never make sense to me. And I think that yeah, that needs to be investigated. And uh, well, she's been charged, and right? And 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 ultimately, yeah. Yeah. There, there needs to be some form of justice implemented in that right. situation. Uh, the latter situation, I got to yeah. tell you, I yeah. know that people are in an uproar. And yep. um, as a as a black man myself, yeah. you know, sometimes I think we we wave the flag of uh, racism or injustice. Sometimes, rightfully so, because you know, yeah. you can only take you know so much before it becomes old hat, right? Yeah, so right. We're talking about not a year, two years. We are talking about just years and years of being targeted, mistreated. Yeah. Uh, manipulated by a system mm -hmm. that was really not designed for our benefit. So yep. I understand why, you know, our default sometimes is untrusting. But in seeing that video, I have to tell you, that is a true situation where he did not have a whole lot of time to make a decision. He yeah, rolled, I agree. He mm -hmm. rolled up into a situation yeah. that was already escalating. Right. Um, and not only that, there were people that were in potential harm's adults. way. Yeah, there were adults involved. You've got someone with a knife yep. charging towards another. Mm -hmm. And we can argue yeah. all day about, okay, well, you know, the, he could have potentially used a taser. But I've seen enough footage that a taser isn't always efficient. There's some people, no, yeah. it'll take you down. And there's other people yeah. that will stand up and look at you like, ha, hit me again. So <laughs> yeah. in, in that situation, it's kind of like, Am I happy with the outcome? Absolutely not. Do I wish it it it, it, it was different? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and, and you can't win them all, though. Right. Can, can, I, can I find him at fault for how the situation was handled? Not really. To me, it's like uh, he, and he, he saved a life. Down several yeah. times but it's like too. he saved one life. I mean. It wasn't like I got out, bang, bang. Like, he, he, he did actually. You, did you see how she had the knife? She was going to strike the, the other girl. So I mean, whether it was would it have been a dead blow, we would it's never a, know. Yeah, but it's a split it stopped, yeah, split, split second decision, decision, and that's yeah. to me uh, the atrocity is the person that is it justified. Is the person that called the police seeking help. That's the crazy. Yeah, thing about I know. It, yeah, but know? why wasn't there adults there? Why was it a, a man kicking a young, a girl on the floor? I don't know if it, was that her alleged father. I don't know. I don't these know. are these are things that haven't come out yet. But what about the officer who got pepper sprayed? Oh yeah, the the uh, lieutenant. Yeah, what about that? Was that was crazy, man. That was over the top, and that was what I think that was uh, of last year. Um, it happened last year, right? November or something like that. Late last, last year, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and him driving, him driving to a, a him a, following the protocol because yeah. the protocol is it says to go where it's well lit. It if there's right. not, and then he pulled into a a gas station. What are you going to do in a gas station well lit? Now you can definitely identify me on your cameras, right. mm -hmm. and. It turned out he even had the tag in the back window. Uh, we all know that. Like, you see that. And you can see it with those cars. You can see it with any car. You can see when a tag is there. I don't care how tinted the windows are. At night, that's your advantage. You can hit and see within a t the tenant, especially if you bought it off of a lot. The so. beams of the, of the of the light should have hit it anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So they would have definitely have seen the... the um, I just thought it was overboard and the fact that the guy was... They were mad because he drove. <sighs> they were mad because he kept driving. That's what it was. It, it was less than a, qu a quarter of a mile. That's what he even said. They were like, oh, you drove for that? He was like, no, it was a quarter mile. And you know these 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 military guys, these the guys that are in the military, they're very accurate when it comes to keeping um, uh, accurate recollections of things. They're like, no, it was a quarter of a mile, and he was keeping his calm. Talk about keeping calm. Oh, this, this guy, mm -hmm. he, uh, he he is the poster child for what you do in a, in a situation that is – you know, escalating yeah. quickly and unnecessarily. Yeah. And, and you know what? That situation is really, um, it, it's like the perfect situation for when we speak about accountability and we talk about mistrust. Yeah. That's a situation, right? Because here we have, so, so many times the story is, oh, well, look at his past. You know, he or she has a record. Mm -hmm. He or she did this in the past. Yeah. Here we're talking about somebody that also serves our country. Yeah. Exactly. Also puts his life on the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's how he's treated. But we know where the real accountability and mistrust comes in is they had this video in their possession. Yeah. Didn't want to release it. And it's not until the shit hit the fan did you know they actually go in and and do something with the officer because he, yeah. was, he was released uh, shortly after the release, release of the of video. video. Yeah. So they, what does that uh, say? Did like, you see? What does that say to the yeah. public? Yeah. 
No, did you see the continuation of that video? No, no. They're, when they sit and they're talking to him, do I've been in this situation you all have when oh, someone's wrong? Oh, they were calm with him, right? No, they were calm with him, but they were like, you, you know what? Uh, you know why didn't you just listen? You, you you made it worse, and they were like, do you want you know what when you know you messed up? They are like, you know, give him a towel. Oh, you want me to wipe your face? He's like, no, no, I don't understand what I did, and he was trying to explain. He goes, you know, uh, you know, um, I can go, we can go and document this, or I can, you know. It's, so basically, if he goes to Superior, it has to do with being, I don't think, court-martialed, but it has something really bad to do if you get in a legal right. system with, in a legal system, it has something to do with the Army. It's bad news for you as far as, I, I don't know the technicalities I, of I how it works. I, I think it's court-martialed. Oh, you would know, court-martialed. Okay, so it'd be court-martialed because you're, you're a vet. So they were like, basically like, we can do that, but, you know, it would not be good for you. So we can I, release yeah, you, or I, we could. I remember, uh, I remember that they trying. They, they was doing the training day. Where, uh, you know, you want you want to go. Yeah, home? you want to go home, or we can <laughs> yeah. think, but it'll be documented. It'd be bad for you, you know. Right. And it's like, whoa, I've heard this rebuttal before. Uh -huh. Um, you know, when when someone's in a wrong and they're trying to save their own neck, like, oh, exactly. this can come back on me because it was, it was a game. Yeah, you know what I mean. They can come back on me, but the fact that he's like, then he was like, you know, you know, because I'm a vet too, and da da da, and I, you know, I, I you serve my country. <laughs> you, the way he said it was like. Uh, it had. It was it, about him versus what he did wrong. It was about saving himself, like you just said. It was about saving himself. He knew he messed up, and he yeah. said, "I talked to my superior, and he said, you know, hey, you can let him go.' I told him about what I want to do. Aha! I know what this reminds me of. Okay, so I'll tell you this. So I had experience. We had experience. Kate and I had experience with her car, uh, and something went wrong with the battery. We had to get service, so it was a Nissan. Uh, we took it to the dealership and whatever. And everything was fine. And uh, all of a sudden, the battery was dead. They had it for a few days, and the battery was fine before that. So I'm like, hey. Um, the guy was like, oh, you guys need a new battery on top of the other stuff. And I'm like, uh, no, we don't. He's like, well, the battery, that's the issue. I said, listen, sir, battery is not the issue. It never was. So here's the thing. Either you you guys replace it or charge it or do something about it, right? And I, you can just tell something was fishy up. They were trying to nickel and dime you all they can get um, on top of the other um, services to repair the car. So he calls me and acts like it's a favor. Well, I talked to my boss and, you know, because we caught him in something. Because I was like, listen, I talked to this guy because they kept switching the service manager on us to someone else, to someone else. And they, and someone else kept adding crap to the car to get fixed and say, no, it's not this. And I'm like, look, look, look. You guys are going to fix this. You keep adding stuff to us. And that's not the initial thing when we pay the $200 for the diagnostics because that's, that's what they do now. Right. Pay the $200. For the diagnostics, we'll add that to the final bill. Gimmick. Yep. Exactly. So you can commit because you paid $200. You don't. You can't go to another mechanic. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, look, this, 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 it wasn't so and so forth. Then he was like, wait, like he did us a favor. What I did, I got it out of my own thing. You know, I talked to my, my manager and he said, hey, you know, what do you want to do? Give him the battery? Oh, uh, so it's it's on us. I was like, bruh, <laughs> bruh. So it's kind of like the same thing, guys. Hey, it's kind of like the same thing. Kind of like oh, the no, same Reg, thing. No, Reg, I gotta disagree with you a little bit. You didn't get pepper spray. Pepper spray. So I, I got you my trying to get bro. that new battery. Uh, nah, you know dude, you always a battery cost from a dealership. <laughs> to, I was my the the wallet was getting pepper spray. Spray the wallet. Yeah, it got fat. Yeah, <laughs> and the reversal that you spray it, it doesn't get fat. It strengths. Uh, <laughs> what about you guys? Have heard about the uh, the whole DMX and DMX passing uh, Ray? Again, your fault that we're covering this last. We were supposed to cover this before, but your fault that we're covering this last. But we're going to pay a homage because I was a huge DMX fan. Speaking of that. Any of you guys were? I, I listened to DMX all, I mean, maybe like uh, five hours driving to a mobile. Uh, no wonder you were angry. <laughs> I wasn't angry. I was just Jeez. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you push the door. <laughs> Want to get at me, dog? Um, I was like, man, <laughs> DMX was the man back in the day. Like, for real. Like, yeah, he so was. Uh, you, were, you were a DMX fan too, Jeff? So... My man X, thank you for just, you know, the music, yeah. the energy, the presence. You know, we, we sleep on X because, um, you know, the, his story didn't really quite unfold to what it could have been. Right. Um, you know, as far as like just, you know, his 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 stardom. I mean, he at one point he I felt like he ruled everything. Everything he touched was gold. Yeah. Yes. Everybody at one he was point, hot. He, was, he hot. was hot on the charts. He was probably one of the first rappers uh, that I thought was in mainstream movies continuously. And actually, he did a good job, you know, in some of those mm -hmm. acting roles. Yeah. Like, he was on the scene. X's first album, in my opinion, is 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 gold. It yeah. stays in my rotation. Yeah. It is easily one of, like, 
my top 10 favorite albums just because of the impact yeah. and the energy that he brought in a time where everything was Always flashy energy. and yeah. gitsy and mm -hmm. he was like rugged and raw and grimy and you know what like I just X is X is uh, he's, you know he's up there he had like a, a prophetic voice man his voice sounded like he was uh, the way he talked the way he delivered the lines when you found out that's the way to do talk when he was rapping I don't know that but da but da 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 uh, just had that cadence with his, you know, the way he's, right. his, his speech patterns, right? Um, very unique. Very and unique. the fact that he brought prayer, man. He brought prayer in every album. Every album. Yeah. And what he, I think he was one of the first to drop double albums or two albums in the same year. But this dude went f platinum five times. You said double albums or the same album in the same year? Uh, same album. No, two albums in one year. Two albums in one year. Yeah, he, he was doing that. He was knocking them out. So he went platinum five times with, you know, for, he never done that. No artist has ever gone platinum five times in a row and that's what he was that's what he was able to do the movies with nas he had he was Aaliyah. yeah uh, yeah Lee, right uh i mean yeah so uh, what did you think about people um you know there's a lot of things that were going on, on social media that people were like oh man now everybody's taking showing these pictures they have with x where the hell were you at when he was suffering and going through all this this addiction Low what were your thoughts on that and well, i'll give you mine low hanging fruit man it's easy to diss somebody yeah you know when Let's just say, that for instance, let's just say, for instance, yeah. you, you diss them right now and you diss them. It would be probably logical for me to diss them, too, because y'all yeah. diss them and not to, not to sound different. But when you're real with somebody, you don't diss them. You, and when somebody's down and you really care about somebody, you, you try to lift them up when you're a real friend. So uh, I think it was just low-hanging fruit, to be mm. honest. Uh, Ray, what is Southern terms? I'm going to have to <laughs> Google that. Um, uh, Jeff? So <laughs> low-hanging fruit. It is just true of human nature that sometimes you can't appreciate something when it's when it's there, when it's yeah. in front of you, when you still have access to it. Um, and if you just think about like the hip hop community in general, I'd yeah. say in the last two, three years, we've lost some people that didn't really get the shine they deserved when they were or, or better yet, the flowers, they didn't, they didn't get the, um, the flowers, they didn't really have the footprint as far as reach when they were here and present, mm -hmm. but the moment they passed, all of a sudden you see some of their albums are like hitting these numbers and are in rotation. So like, like Nipsey, Nipsey yeah, like you got Nipsey, you got a couple, you got like Pop Smoke, you got a couple people that passed that like mm. on their passing. You're like, yo, you know these guys' albums are in rotation. You're seeing their merch everywhere. You, you know, you're X. seeing all these people there coming forward. Like, oh, we miss you. Yeah, and that's not to say they didn't have a following before, but you know, you just feel it when when something's you know it's it's. I don't know. It's like that old pair of sneakers. You see it in the corner every day. <laughs> it's no big deal, right? And then you finally yeah. throw it away. Oh. And then that one uh, that one occasion so. arises and you're like, oh, damn, I wish I still had them sneakers. I and know, like, right? So I got a terrible I, analogy. Yeah, you it know? is. Because I'm like, you're talking about my thing with the damn dealership and pepper spray. This dude talking about shoes. Like you can't appreciate sometimes <laughs> oh when it's in front gosh. of you, you know? So what I, what I was, uh, what I was, I thought about the whole thing where people are like, oh, how come you didn't help him and, 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 and do anything, but you guys are posting pictures, we weren't checking on him. Here's the thing. If you ever dealt with anyone that has addiction, you can't help them unless they want help. Mm -hmm. And X seems like he was very strong willed in mind that, hey, if you, if, if you can't, if he can't help himself, you're not going to be able to help him. Right. So, uh, that's that's one of the things. Like, ever dealt with a family member that has addiction? Mm -hmm. Yo, it's hard, and and you, you know you can you can stay with them all you want, but at the end of the day, you can't babysit people, especially if you have a, another life. Right. You know what I mean? But you can be there for them. So when they're around you, you can give them, you can give them praise. You can tell them you'll be there for them. That's the best support you can do. So, I I saw the two, I saw two sides of it, and I was like, yeah. But if you you know if you guys haven't been friends or you haven't checked on him yeah you shouldn't be posting pictures here and there but if you have been in his life and his and had a relationship with him then yeah i i, I can see you, it's okay to post that because like i said you can't save people that don't want to be saved it's, it's hard to get out of addiction so the crazy thing about x is i mean you guys can tell me but yeah outside of like you know like uh having to adhere to like corporate meetings or being at a certain place at a certain time or maybe completing something by a certain time yeah i couldn't really find anyone that had anything negative to say about x the man even even with him mm. dealing with the yeah. addiction everyone yeah. talked about how giving he was yes. how loving he was like how like spontaneous on the moment like you know he came in and his energy and spirit just yeah. like filled the room like once you interacted with him 
Like he he left the mark, you know what I'm saying? For the people who knew him, who right, really, who really, people. really knew him. Well, but they even said some of the people this. I got to work with him. Yeah. Like I mm-hmm. saw stuff from Swiss Beats. I saw yeah. stuff from you know with this music industry people that that acted along. Everyone, family members, they had nothing but you know great things to say about X the Man, right. um, and everybody followed up with you know like you know his his struggle. Yeah. Which when you hear yeah. how that came about, yeah, it was just you know, crazy. That, in itself that is, is real crazy. crazy. Yeah, a, a mentor basically laced his his. Uh, is weed with with crack, and that's how he got addicted to it. Someone that he looked up to, a fourteen year old boy looking up, you know, this is when he was learning about music and how to rap. And who, who was that mentor? You, you know, uh, I don't know his name. That? He mentioned the name. I, I've I heard. I can't it. remember it either. But I thought he came forward recently and said that that was not a true story. That he did no such thing. You know. I mean, what is he gonna say? He'd probably be marked for death. No, that didn't happen that way. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, and DMX can't say if it's true or not. Right. Exactly. Uh, uh, another thing um, that you were saying too is they they said this dude didn't care about money. That's why yep. he was giving out money. Um, it wasn't about the flashy cars and stuff. If you looked at it, I mean, the dude wore like the same. I think it was silver chain. Sil- silver, silver dog, cha- yep. dog chain. Yeah, a, a, a whole chain. time. Yeah, and and uh, like, like, they say he would be. Rolls. He would be in 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 like a a, a a homeless not shelter but like abandoned building writing songs talking to homeless people sitting down talking to homeless people, and and really engaging in that. That's what it was all about. He didn't really he didn't care about that, and he kept giving people shots that deserved it, and opportunities. Uh, so, I think yeah, uh, they lost a a great guy, but damn, he left a, he left a body of work as well. And man, yeah, I, I think he's at peace. Uh, unfortunately. I think when we were like, oh, man, I wish you was here. Yo, if you suffering on Earth, I know it's, it's bad for me to say, but if someone's suffering on Earth and they leave, I mean, I think it's one of the worst things to wish they were here still suffering in a sense, even though they leave a, lo- a trail of things behind. Yeah, that's just the selfish side of us, though, yeah. because, you know, you, you, you feel that something's missing. It's lacking. Like, yeah. that, that energy's gone. So, you know, that's just the selfish side of us. But you're right. If you're thinking about it from a a greater spiritual plane, then, yeah, that person's transitioned on to something better. So. Absolutely. And, and I can agree with that because when my father was going through what he was going through, and yeah. I, I wanted him here, but he was suffering, so I can mm-hmm. relate to that. Wow. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, you know, he, he he leaves, you know, kids behind, but, I mean, they're, they're he was a man of faith, so that's what you got to keep in mind. He knows where he's going. He's made his... He, he, at the end of the day, you th- hope that he's made his peace with God and, and he's moved on. But speaking of that, um, we talked about this before, Raymond. Jeff, I don't, I'm going to get your opinion on this. What What do you think? Do you think cancel, cancel culture should be canceled? Has it gone too far? So, yeah, that's a uh, that's a loaded question. It's loaded. I think cancel culture is great because you know what? Uh, as a people, mm-hmm. there's usually so much division and so i'm usually for it when you've got a group of people coming together uh with you know that's that with one goal and you know they do things in a in a non uh violent way to get their point across okay that said that said uh you know cal- cancel culture is somewhat um polluted and what i mean by that is you've got people that have a big voice because they're sitting down at home and they're shielded Mm -hmm. uh, from having to deal with the consequences of their comments. You know, sometimes that can be very disrespectful or downright hate speech because you know what? Hey, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big person behind my screen, behind my phone, behind my laptop. And you know, that's, that's where I think it gets a little crazy. I do think that sometimes cancel culture can produce results that are positive and then, um, just because of where we're at with social media and where our society, how that plays into that, it's just really easy for someone to get reckless and say things because you know what, there's there's little consequence to it. So it's it's a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you I wholeheartedly as far as that because it's, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, it can be used for the positive. It can enhance. It can make change. You can do things to help people out, you you can hurt people. I mean, it could be something detrimental to someone and things can be untrue. Okay, so from a non-bias point, I'm going to put something out there and see how you guys take it and what you would do. So speaking of DMX and cancel culture, so they're going after a lot of his music that had the um, derogatory words for terms for um, homosexuals uh, back in the day, right? So this is you got to factor, and this is 19, 
1997, 98, mm-hmm. 93, you know, the, the years have gone when this was accepted in the hip hop world. Judging from that now, I'm going to keep that there, right? Yeah. So now put that into the modern day where people are taking down statues now of of the Confederate soldiers. Does that fall into the same category? So is it okay to have these statues and everything removed and not have um, hateful words maybe um, that isn't music removed as well? Or is it part of history? Should both of them be stated or is one better than the other or is it contradictory? Well, as far as his music, I mean, yeah, like you just said, it was a different time, different era. And so was Confederate. So was the war. Okay. I mean, okay. I'm just saying. I, I, yeah, all good points. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. at the same time, uh, this is a press we're talking about. We're not talking about a statue. And we didn't give him the opportunity to speak on that, to speak on, you know, what was going through his mind and how he felt about it. I mean, he – he may have a different opinion now. We, I don't know. He doesn't have the opportunity to, to speak on that. But at the same time, a statue uh, is different than a person. Well, it's music, though. So it is a person, though. Yeah, but let, let's just say he's, he, he says, you know, uh, I feel differently about that. But he, we can't. But here's the thing. We're gonna, I'm going to approach it fair, just like we can't go back and talk that, to that, these, that, these that Confederate soldiers. That, no, we can't go that. back and talk to them if they have a different opinion now. You know what I'm saying. I got your answer for you. Can, can, can I can, tag me in, Coach? Can, can I get in on this? Tag. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm with Ray, right? Okay. We're, 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 comparing, uh, we're, we're comparing a statue to a person. But, mm-hmm. but here's, okay. here's what I'll say about it. Well, that. music. We're talking here's, music and we're talking right. statue. Okay. But a lot of the things that you have to keep in mind is the origins, right? So okay. context is always important. It would be really interesting to see if X of today yeah. feels the same way that X of, you know, uh, his first album feels. Not only that, you know, the the music industry and okay. I think people in general and especially to let's let's not front and act like, OK, this is all universal. There are plenty of places. There's pockets and cities in this country that are way more open minded and have always been in comparison to others. And when you think about X and where he's from and his origins, that's just yeah. something that northerners in general they weren't very open to that. But even if we want to get past all of that, because you know what, you're right, X isn't here to defend himself. Here's yeah. the ultimate truth. Yeah. As a person, if I don't like what X said, I don't have to listen to his album. Gotcha. I don't have to go on Spotify or Apple Music. I could even change the damn station if we're, if we're in the car and it's playing on the radio. Right. But you know what I don't have? I don't have that same option if I have to walk by and look at that damn Confederate statue. Every I got you. Day. And okay. that is the difference right there. You know okay. what I'm saying? That, that, to me, that's, just, that's, that's what so, I'm saying. So with that said, should, should the Cosby shows and stuff be removed? If Weinstein's movies haven't been removed? I'm pretty Ooh. sure... I'm pretty sure the the people that were impacted by both these men would like to see them moved. I have to tell you, the Cosby Show, growing up for me, was one of my favorite. Absolutely, shows. every Thursday at seven o'clock, I would and be home for the street lights came on. It, oh wow! And and running when, home <laughs> when you uh, it's not it's not even because just because you know what it was a black family, which honestly at the time there wasn't. Um, That's what it was for me. There, there wasn't a whole lot of shows where you had a doctor and a lawyer, yeah, married couple, yep, you know, uh, successful, a, a successful family, love yeah. the lessons that was taught. I mean, you could go back and watch the Cosby's now, and there, there is still lessons in those episodes when that apply game. today. Um, but I'll say this: yeah, it has definitely impacted how I feel about the show. Like the show doesn't carry that same sincerity that it did for me. Uh, if I, if I'm walking by and it's on, I'll still watch it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, we can argue that on many fronts. Are you guys still listen to R Kelly's music? Uh, well, I haven't listened to that in a long, long time, but as far as the Cosby show, I mean, there's a lot of things behind the Cosby show cause he wanted to buy the NBC. So you got to research right. and look back right. and see, because uh, even Janice, Janice, Joplin? Well, not no, Janice. Um, uh, the model, right? Yeah, the model. She even she was she was found out she was plagiary. She had perjury. But um, no plagiary. No, no. What was it on? You're on trial. Perjury. She, perjury. perjury. Right. Mm-hmm. She committed perjury on trial just to say she you know she was just trying to be whatever. So she it was proven that she was she was lying. So there's a lot of things that came out. So 
I'd look into more into the Cosby situation to figure figure out why he was targeted for a lot of things. I don't know per se if it's all true, but there's a lot of conspiracy theories and the fact that his his son was killed when he was trying to buy NBC yeah. back in the day, and he said he was going to make it more of a black uh-huh. do what BET was doing, but he was going to do it on a classy Cosby. Because when you control the information, you, you can know, yeah yeah you, you can when you control the media absolutely. Outlet. So you brought up you brought up R. Kelly and you brought up the Cosby Show. Yeah, what about uh? The Chappelle Show. What about it? Should Just that should that be cancel culture? Why? There's a lot of undertones. Now the thing about the Chappelle. He went show. to everyone. To Chappelle went even he went through he went through black people's yeah, and stuff. Saying. He went through everyone that you can't say that he didn't pick. Yeah, yeah. But he picked on us the but most. You, but you can't say that it's not. Um, nah, because you got everyone. But I think there's a truth to um, equality. Yeah. Both good and bad, right? Right. So yeah. what I mean by that is like yeah, well, if he's yeah. offending everyone, everyone. Then, <laughs> then it's they're okay. All upset, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. okay. Versus when you target one, one you know, okay. one or two situations, Abs- then it then it carries it, Absolutely. it carries a different energy about it. So I think and, and the truth is, you know what, uh Dave Chappelle personally for me yeah. has taken on a a very a very different role for me personally as a man mentally outside of just comedy like have you guys spent any time just looking into him and and like watching his stuff like he is a very smart individual oh he's very smart uh, yeah um, definitely and you know he just he he carries a different light for me so it helps that he's funny because he has found in my opinion the perfect balance between making you laugh and all at the same time, getting you to think. Yes. And that's, a, yes. that's a tough thing to pull off, to yes. be honest, mm-hmm. but still be funny. Yeah. And even after you're laughing, you know, sometimes you circle about like, oh, shit, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, he, he, he plants that seed. So. I think he wrote, like, I, I, from what I remember uh, offhand, I think he wrote, like, Half Baked when he was, like, 19 years old or something. And, Super and smart dude. Yeah, and he wrote... Uh, uh, you know, he was doing comedy circuit stuff and, 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 and things at 15 or whatever, but he comes from a, a great upbringing from uh, scholars, you know, I, his parents. I saw an interview where uh, Kevin Hart yeah. and Chris Rock went to watch uh, a Chappelle show. Okay. I mean, a Chappelle, like, a uh, stand-up. And, 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 like, he was, I think he was doing it out, like, in in, in a farm. Okay. Out there in where he's from, in, I think, is it Cleveland, Ohio? It's Ohio, I think. I think it's Ohio. Okay. So they just went to check him out or whatnot. Because, you know, comedians just, they do stuff they like to like to test their materials. Yeah, okay. And so they were they were watching uh, Chappelle, and uh, after they heard his stuff, mm-hmm. they took their material and balled it up and threw it away. Oh, wow. This is before they got big, or this is when they were big? This is when they're big. Oh, wow. They were like, oh, no, we, we can't. I mean, it the stuff that they said he used was just like, can't believe he just said that or, or the way he thought about it. He's Ooh, like an advocate <laughs> for like things, whether it's civil rights or something. It's yeah. it's the way he puts the comedy, it's but he's speaking on things that are happening and he's putting it. Like you said, he's making you think like, oh, this is funny, but this is facts. This is true. So there's like, you know, how they say there's 50 percent truth in each joke. And that's what he does. He yeah. really makes you sit there and like, oh, really analyze and say, oh, shit. Well, it's so ridiculous. But that's oh, my God, he's right. Yeah. you Yeah. He presents it in a way you're like, ha ha. Wait a minute. That's exactly what's happening. Yes, this is crazy. You're, <laughs> yes, you're right. Yeah, man. He's he's a brilliant he's a brilliant comedian. Um so I'm super he's stoked a, because he's a comedian's comedian. Because uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before I read where uh, him, mm-hmm. Talib Kweli, and Most Def were actually gonna have a podcast um, out soon. And I just I have to believe Whoa. that, you know, these are like Three really uh, influential conscious. brothers. They're yeah. conscious, conscious. Mm-hmm. you know. Um, they have a, a, a pulse of of the people. Yeah, they, they understand the history. They understand the plight. So, man, I'm stoked to 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 see you know what that uh, what what that looks like. What that sounds. Damn, like. yo, three, yo. It sounds like oh, word on the street is that yo, we might be getting a third guy on the show. Is that right? <laughs> we might be. <laughs> You it's the word on the street. It might it, you, you've met you've met him before, yeah. He's, you might get a third guy to 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 complete this bro rant. So the the uh, the uh, the True. logo might change. It might be someone popping out the middle. Maybe popping Ooh. out of uh, of Ray's shoulder on the right. You don't know if <laughs> Ray wants to be in the middle, but it's a possibility. Speaking so of, we might give them some challenge. Check out the hat. No, check bro out the rant. hat. Yeah. Check out the shirt. The, the sweater. 
The, the, the sweater? The friends, the friends, the friends. Come on, so bro. I'm going to oh, keep it real with you, family. Yeah. I showed up here with no Bro Rants merch. Um, <laughs> Look at Ray, cousin yo. Jeff, cousin Jeff uh, 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 failed on this one simple task. But I will say this. Yeah. It's quality stuff. Like, Reg will tell you, <laughs> I yeah. borrowed this from him, and I'm trying to buy it off him. He's like, nah, go go to the site and, and get go, your own. I'm like, exactly. yo, but I got it on now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, I, I, broke, I broke it in for yeah, you. It's I all good, bro. You, you know, I, I like, appreciate cool. you. I appreciate you breaking <laughs> no, it's in. No, quality you. stuff uh, is uh, the, the the branding is legit. You it's got a variety it of stuff. It's comfortable. Okay. And we're in Florida right now, right? And I yeah. got this sweater on. I got to tell you, it's not super heavy. Like, it's it's a good fit. The inside lining is tight. Like, yo, they they, they did their thing well, on We this. appreciate that. We yes. really appreciate that. Actually, and uh, uh, coming this week, we actually have a great interview. Speaking of beacons and people that are uh, for advocates, we have a great interview with Sean Ellis, guys. So you guys will definitely have to check that out coming up. And who is Thursday. Sean Ellis? Netflix trial four. Sean Ellis, uh, falsely convicted of a crime that he did not commit. Yes, exactly. Spent 20, two, two years. years well, he rounds it off to 22 years. It's 21, 21 years, seven months and 20, 29 days. 29 days. Yes, sir. So he spent all that time locked up for a crime that he did not commit. And he's out now. He's out now. Um, anyway, we had a great interview with him. We had some technical difficulties, but it wouldn't be bro rants without would technical not difficulties. Be bro rants without the Absol- difficulties. Absolutely, not. and and that's one of the reasons Jeff is here because we wanted to make sure that we had the uh, we did this interview right, and we had um, some arsenal with. We had enough people and uh, the energy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Energy, exactly. So we hope you guys are going to enjoy that. Definitely look out for it on Thursday. It should be out. If it's not out, it's Ray's fault. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, though, no, check out Trial 4. It yeah. was, uh, even if you're not into documentaries, you know, sometimes it can feel a little heavy. It is it is such a great watch, and there's, there's layers to it. So, mm-hmm. you know, as you get through, you know, part one, you're like, Nah, <laughs> you get yeah. to part two. You're like, oh hell nah. Yeah. It just it, it just it just takes you on this path, and and you 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 you're left there scratching your head, thinking like. There's no way this something like this could really happen, right? Like this, this, this can't be real. So yeah, mm-hmm. check it out. And it happens. Where it happens a lot more times than we believe, and it has to do with economics too, man. If you don't have the, if you don't have the resources to have someone defend you, you're stuck with a public defender. You are screwed. pretty much screwed. Yeah, yeah they got screwed. a workload that's. I don't know how we have something that's supposed to be fair, and we still have these public defenders that are overworked, and um, their case, their case volume is t- extremely high. I mean, it's not healthy for them. It has to do so. I would love to see what their the um, statistics are as far as what their mental. I meant to ask him that too. What their mental health is, knowing that they're putting people to prison just to ease up their workload. Maybe we should we should have one on. Yeah, you on should. Yeah, uh, we should. Let's right. Work, I'll work on that. Oh, you will. Okay, I'll that'd, that'd be wonderful that. to have someone on like that yeah. on the show. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, like I said, my mom. My mom is that his aunt. Uh, binge Based watch, on, okay. yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> binge watch. She binge watched the thing, man. She was like trying to get to. She didn't know about it. And I told her, "Yo, watch this." And because we were trying to come up with some great questions for the guy, it's it's a lot of pressure when you're like, "Uh, uh, what do we what do we ask that no one's asked before?" Because he's been on a few shows already. So she was like binge watching. She couldn't believe it. And she was like, "Oh my gosh, I cried. I, I, you know, I got angry. I, it's so much emotions." Like Jeff said, roller coaster. Uh, of a ride on emotions that you're going to go through when you watch this. So definitely check it out and also check out his website, www.trial4four.com to buy his merch, wounded but not broken. Show your support that way. Um, and also, while you're at it, go to Bro Rants, uh, bonfire.com forward slash Bro Rants. You know, you know the damn name, guys. I'm not going to spell it for you. When you see Get me again, merch. I'm going to be like, bro, Rance merch uh-huh. out, right? I'm going to have the hat. <laughs> they may not even have scarves yet. I'm going to get the scarf. <laughs> Yo, we're working on that, bro. We're working on that. Like, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be right. I'm we got the right sombreros coming, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we got that something coming. for everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, what do you guys want to leave on a, on a, a rant or something positive? However you want to leave it, I'll leave it to you guys so we can uh, leave these leave the audience with something Let's leave it on a positive note with uh, because after the interview we had with um, Mr. Ellis, uh, how much peace he had, as, oh, okay, uh, versus anger and bitterness. I mean, I was surprised by that. 
you know, as far as so let's let's just let's just say peace. You're gonna say peace. I'm gonna say peace. All right, Jeff, what do you got, man? I'm gonna say, hey, I know our name is Bro Rant, so I'm I'm, just, I'm gonna leave everyone with their own whatever they want to leave. I like to rock the boat, so okay. I, I appreciate Ray's poison. He's right, <laughs> he's right, Mister Preach. Ellis. Mr. Ellis has a yeah. peace and poise about him yeah. that is amazing. Got gotcha. um, you. know, thank you for the opportunity to take part of that. Both oh, you're you. welcome. You're welcome. Uh, but this message goes out to my peoples. Okay. When I say my peoples, it's not gender. It's not color. It's just it's just my peoples. We all family. We have to find a way to to get to a middle ground between us. Uh, us being the peoples um, and our expectations of law enforcement um, and law enforcement's willingness to hear some of our concerns um, and actually implement real time change. I feel like, you know, this is a relationship that could have and should have been worked on from a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, but what it is, is technology is taking us to a place where it's no longer your word against mine mm -hmm. because you know what, there's several angles from a camp, from a camera. And not only that, but you know, the one positive that's come out of this is there's just a unity, right? I, I feel like regardless of race, creed, color, there are people that mm -hmm. are speaking out about the injustice and, and, and injustice happens on both sides, not just to us, you know, the supposed to be law abiding citizens, but even law enforcement, because they have a rough deal and their job is not easy. So, yeah. you know, this is a cry for peace. Let's let's get together. Let's get to these tables. Let's sit down. Let's talk about the issues. Let's talk about the needs and let's find let's find a common ground. Like You know, let's let's fast track in two, three years from now. We could be having conversations about the other problems going on in the world instead of, you know, law enforcement like we, we, we can make this happen. We're at a place where we could definitely make it happen. We just got to be willing to listen and we got to be willing to act on it. Oh, I like that, man. Well, well said. Well said. I do like that. Um, first and foremost, if you guys are liking the way we're looking, I want to give a shout out to Jay Wood. Uh, Ooh, Jay Wood. Yeah. Jay Jennifer Woods. Jennifer Woods. I, I don't know if she wanted to give her the full name, but I guess Ray did that. <laughs> so you want to throw the social too? Okay. Uh, thank you because she hooked us up uh, as far as how to set up the light and everything. So appreciate that. And we're just trying to upgrade and get better with this. Um, my rant. Do I have a rant? Let me see. And do you have a rant? I do have a rant. Um, always, just a rant on myself. Always be prepared, uh, even when you think you are prepared. Double check, go over stuff, because, man, I had this all set up. I was worried about the lighting, and I was like, oh, I got the video down. All of a sudden, the <laughs> software wasn't working. I was working with that for a half an hour before these guys came over. Then I finally figured out when Ray was here, I was like, uh, got it. oh, I finally got it. Got everything going. Then I forgot the plug to put in the laptop. And then, so the laptop died during an interview. And uh, what else on top of that? Is this a rant or just a crap? I ran on myself. Just a rant on myself. Just a rant on myself. I'm not whining. I'm just going to say, hey, do better. Uh, so if you think you got it, double check, do over, especially if you have an important interview, guys, or it could turn to shit. But thank God these guys were here and uh, we recovered. And thank you for Sean Ellis and his assistant, uh, Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia Dixon Cynthia. for Cynthia. all of your help. Yeah, I was gonna say, Dix, you're yeah. awesome, girl. Thank you. Sorry about your daughter losing her match. Um, you really just bring that up. I had to bring that up because <laughs> she's going to listen to this. So thank you. Uh, she might listen to us. I don't know. remember which one's Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to say nothing. I'm just going to let it go. Uh, I had to come back. He's going to say something with the, you know, about oh. the final tailor jacket. Oh, you're going to say so, something? So I want to say to his family, he's right. Like, we experience all types of difficulties, but what he's not letting you know is my man put in a lot of time for the preparation, right? Oh, like, yes. he made sure these lights, you see us, this cocoa brown glistening right now? <laughs> That's this dude, okay? Like, That's Jay Wood. You know, That's Jay he, Wood. Well, uh, thank you, Jay Wood. But you know you. what? She ran with the assist, but you, you know, you definitely put it together. And even though we experienced all those issues yeah. and problems, you know what? You should have seen him working diligently to get it on track. And we Hard did, working. We did right the ships. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's symbolic of life. It doesn't matter how prepared you are. You're going to find yourself in a challenging situation. It's how you deal with it. That's really counts. You know what I'm saying? So props to Reg. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Damn, Jeff. You sure you want to be on the show? Gosh, <laughs> damn, bro. <laughs> Loving this. Uh, Let's work for me and Ray. Ray and I are like, okay, cool. Like, uh, you guys have a wonderful week and, uh, we will see you soon. Bye.